today, I want to talk to you about what I call value added. Say value added. Value added. That's one of the most public, prominent statements in Nigeria today. It's called value added tax. Tax. That's what the government takes from us. That's why we're all angry now. What's value added? Now, what it means is simply the addition of features to a basic line or model for which the buyer is prepared to pay extra. How many of you have heard this statement before? That the water that you buy in bottled water is the same one that is in pure water. Such it, isn't it? Is it H2O2? Is H2O? The one in a cup was in one spring. It's H2O. What do you call it? Gossip. Some of you even know it to an extent that you think gossip is not pure. And you see a perfume at your hand. You are looking for necessary. And they will make the thing so so clear that you think that the water is purer than every other. Right? But how much you how much is water? Ten naira. Yeah. How much is water? Why? Because Branding. some people work extra on what? Branding. Just on branding. They added value. And that value became something that even the customer is willing to what? Pay for. The question I want to ask for just today is have we added value to the commission God has called us to? There are people people see and they are willing to serve God. Serving God leaves just the realm. Welcome is not she. <laughs> I think those that the garments will fit in more than me. Hallelujah. It's not she. So there are things you there are people that you see, and the call of God leaves just the realm of an idea that you know that they say God wants to use people. Their life has adorned that call. It has placed a better premium on it that you are you can make a better connect. Are you following me? That's what I call value. For example, in the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 10. Titus 2 verse 10. It said, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of our God. Someone said the doctrine of our God is beautiful. The doctrine of our God is beautiful. But yet it can still be adorned. The name of our God is beautiful, but the name of our God can be blasphemed. Among the nations. God told David the reason why your son is going to die when you allow Uriah to die is because you have allowed the nations to blaspheme my name. You've sent a wrong signal. So our lives can send a wrong signal and our lives can adorn the doctrine of our Savior in all things. We are either appreciating or depreciating. We are either adorning it or blaspheming it. And this is true for every one of us that are here. Somebody is watching you as a person, watching us as a church, and you see that we are adorning 
the doctrine of Christ or blasphemy is. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 to 27. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? But one receives the prize. You are running. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Okay, because I'm reading wrong, so you are running. Run in such a way that you may obtain it, yes? Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain an imperishable crown, but we an imperishable crown. Now, there are two crowns there to be fight for us. There is a crown that perishes, which means it depreciates. It moves from good to bad. Then there is another one that is imperishable. It's standing. Are we together? Yes. Therefore, thus not I, I run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight not as one that beats the air. But I discipline my body and bring it to subjection. Lest when I preach to others, I myself should become disqualified. There are two crowns: perishable and imperishable. If the crown is going to endure to all generations, it must be adding value from generation to generation. Are you following? Yes. In Proverbs 27, verse 24, Proverbs 27, verse 24. The Bible told us riches are not forever. They can use you riches to describe, it can be the story of a man. But that man, oh my God, if you know that man 10 years ago, he changed his car every year. But now, he's still the same man. He's as tall as this. His height is the same. Sometimes even the job is the same. But the description is not the same. Why? Riches are not what? Forever. Nor does what? A crown endure to all generations. A crown, the crown described there is a perishable crown. There was a time in Yoruba land where our kings were the second to gods. Today, local government chairman sat there. Because the crown does not endure. At the time, we don't see the face of the king. Now, our king does come in. <laughs> because the crown you too. There's a crown shady happening around you. <laughs> See, when some of us are running to we are, <laughs> the crown is perishing. But our own striving is for an imperishable crown. That's why Abraham was so concerned about Isaac. So that what God is doing can advance with him. And as a church, we must become so concerned that what God has put in our hands is appreciated. Because if it's not appreciated, let me tell you what it is. It is not static. It's depreciated. If our life is not done in the gospel, it is, it is bringing, it is taking the glory from it. That's the truth. I will show you and compare to you the wealth of David and the wealth of Solomon, and I will ask you more questions. Let's check the wealth of David, because that's two generations. We want to check how the crown endures. First Chronicles 27, from verse 25. First Chronicles 27, from verse 25. As 
Mafet, the son of Atiyah, was over the king's treasures. They are describing the wealth of, of David. Jehonatan, the son of Uzziah, was over the storehouses in the field, in the cities, in the villages, in the fortress. So the king has treasuries, he has storehouses. Ezra, the son of Chilu, was over those who did the work of the field for what? The tilling of the ground. Shimei, the Ramatite, was over the vineyards. Zadish, the Shifite, was over the produce of the vineyard for the supply of wine. Belhana, the Gedorite, was over the holy trees and the sycamore trees that were in the lowlands. Joash was over the store of oil. Shitra, the Sharonite, was over the ass that fled in Sharon. Shaphat, the son of Adlai, was over the ass that were in the valley. Obil, the Ishmaelite, was over the camels. Jediah, the Meronite, was over the donkeys. Jaziz, the Adrite, was over the flock. All these were officials over King David property. He had trees planted, stores of oil, camels, donkeys, flocks. In 2 Chronicles 9, from verse 10, let's look at him in that solo. 2 Chronicles 9, are you following? Also, the servants of Iram, the servants of and servants of Solomon, who brought gold from Ophir, brought Aldon wood and precious stones. One thing you will never easily see with David is that you didn't see too much of trade outside of his realm. Every description of David's wealth was within his territory. Did you notice? But every time you discuss you discuss, you discuss something outside of that territory. Look at it. The king made walkways of the Algon wood. They brought to him what? Algon wood. What did he do? He made walkways. He made walkways. Now, if you are going to pay for, listen, I'm not teaching about money. I'm teaching you a kingdom person. If you are going to pay for, they will say this is Algon wood, and this is the treated Algon wood that has been made walkways. Are they going to be the same price? Huh? So he made walkways of the Algon wood of the king's house, and for the king's house, also house and string instruments. So they gave him Algon wood. He made walkway. He made instrument. There was none such as seen before the, in the land of Judah. They have always seen what. Algon woods. What they have not seen is what Solomon made them do. There's a way people pay for what they are used to. Because it's not what they are used to. You don't get it. Continue. King Solomon gave to the king of Sheba all she desired, whatever she had, much more than she has brought to the king. She turned and went to her own country and her servants. The weight of gold that came to Solomon yearly was 666 talents of gold. Beside what the traveling merchants and traders brought, and all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. Are you always saying that Solomon's gold is overseas? See, and King Solomon made 200 shields of armored gold. He didn't just get gold. What did he do with it again? He processed it. 600 shekels of armored gold went into each ship. Some other people will have 600 shekels in their stock. Solomon will pick this and make one ship. But that one ship will have a higher price than the 600 shekels. Because he has worked on it. Are you following me? He also made 300 shields of armored gold. 300 shekels of gold went into each ship. The king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory. He overlaid it with pure gold. The throne had six steps with a full stool of gold, which were fastened to the throne. There were hammers on either side of the place of the sea. Two lions stood beside the hammers. Twelve lions stood there, each on one side of the six steps. Nothing like this had been made for any other kingdom. It's not because any other kingdom has not seen high food. But there is something they did with what they have seen. 
that has not been in any other kingdom. You can read to verse 28 describing the wealth of Solomon. In fact, the Bible, when, when you feel it, the Bible says, David Solomon made gold and silver common like stones. Then he made cedars common like sycamore trees. That's part of the things they claim that David had. But what did he do? He, he didn't just have sycamore trees. He, he began to plant a tree that was not common. You don't hear cedars in Israel. Cedars were used to describe Lebanon. David began, that, Solomon began to plant it. They became common like the sycamore trees of the lowland. David had sycamore trees. Is it not funny that David was the one that gathered, but Solomon was the one that built the temple? It's a message. The builder. Because he had a plan. But they are, it's not all children that you invest in the hard work. Some people, the crown does not endure the generation. Because we want to add another song. First Kings chapter 7, verse 51. Solomon had another song. First Kings 7, 51. So all the work that Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated. The silver and the gold and furnishings put them in the treasure of the house of the Lord. So some of the things you are seeing in the hand of Solomon was actually what his father had dedicated. And those are the gold that he built and, and fashioned into shields. Some of us expect that everything he told us. Sometimes all this stupid EVC seed. You must have the capacity to incubate. I can't tell you everything God wants to do with you. I can only sometimes the only thing I want to tell you is that God beats your life, and that's the seed. You take what has been dedicated, you begin to brood on it until you are fun. It was be recorded and proven that God sent a prophet to you. Think of what I just said. God has sent his prophet to me. Because there's a way I will take that word and it will be my faith after some time will be clearly expressed before everybody. God is doing something. But in 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 1 to 12, Solomon had another son. They called him the old one. He inherited all these things too. He came to pass when the old one had established the kingdom by strengthened himself. He forsook the Lord of God, of the Lord, and all Israel along with him. So God's it happened in the fifth year of King Roban that Shisha, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem because they had transgressed against the Lord. With 12,000 chariots, 60,000 oxmen, people without number who came out of Egypt, the Lubim, the Sukim, and the Ethiopians. And they took the fortified cities of Judah and came to Jerusalem. So, Shema the prophet came to Rehoboam, the leaders of Judah who were gathered together in Jerusalem called Shisha, and said to them, Thus says the Lord, you are forsaking me, therefore I have left you in the hand of Shisha. So the leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves and they said, The Lord is righteous. So said, The Lord is righteous. The Lord is righteous. So you will not be able to blame God that that's, that is the reason why you are not prospering. So you will not be able to blame God very soon. That is the reason why you don't know. The Lord will prove his righteousness. Sometimes when God is teaching, when God is building patterns, God is proving his innocence. You will tell yourself later, I've offered you. The Lord. If you hold it on more than it is needed, you will soon discover that God's plan will continue. But who will not increase? Eh? 
The Lord uh, is Nigeria. The Lord is. That's even when you are faithful to tell yourself the truth. Because all of us still believe in God. It's the God that is not. Many a times, most of us here don't have anything to blame God on. He has given you pastors. In fact, some of you are so intoxicated with the word that by Sunday you have forgotten because what you had on us because <laughs> another way is eating. The Lord is righteous. Tell them to say the Lord is righteous. Say that they didn't give a clear experience and a clear understanding that you must be holy as the Lord your God is holy. Have you ever seen the joint stage we hear before? The Lord say amen. amen. Are you hearing? Amen. Now, when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah and said, They have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance. My rod shall not be poured on Jerusalem by the end of Shisha. Nevertheless, there will be a servant that they may distinguish my service from the service of the kingdom of the nations. Because it's only God's yoke that is light. No matter how you think God has put yoke on you, if you see the yoke of nations, you will thank God for his yoke. His commandments are light. They are not grievous. If God is fighting, have you discovered the name of Fort Jacob? Whose name changed? Okay. Eh? Yes, God. So Shisha, the king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord, the treasures of the king, and he took away and carried away the gold sheet which Solomon has made. Solomon brought the gold that his father David had dedicated. He made gold sheet. And left it for his own. Then in the days of the son, the king came and took away the gold sheep. See that you are appreciating? You are appreciating. Yes. And whenever the king. Yes. So King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place. They took away gold shield. Then he made bronze shield in their place. He committed them to the hand of the guards who guarded the doorway of the king's house. So when, whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the guard would bring them out and take them back into the guard room. Even the bronze was so precious that they have to sign for every time they pick it. This is this grandson of David. The crown. Is it because it is natural? It is because it is nature that there must be depreciation or because something went wrong. That's what we are investigating. This man called Solomon has always had this word. If you read Ecclesiastes chapter 2. That's what the whole entire book of Ecclesiastes was about. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1. I'm using this adversary as a retreat. That I'm going instead. He said, I said in my heart, come now, I will test you with mirth. I will therefore enjoy pleasure. But surely this was also vanity. I said of laughter, madness, of mirth, what does he accomplish? This is what I'm talking about. I sat my heart out to gratify my flesh with my wife, guiding my heart with wisdom. How to lay hold on fully till I might see what good, what, what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. I made my works great. I built myself houses. I planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards. I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools from which to water the growing trees of the roof. I made sure no seasons don't affect what I'm planting. I acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my house. People are willing to sleep 
being my servants from generation to generation. Because it was even better for them than to be free. I had greater possessions of art and form than all who were in Jerusalem before me. So Solomon advanced from what David left. He had something than all that was in Jerusalem before him. That included his father David. I gathered for myself silver and gold, special treasures of kings and prophets, acquired male and female singers, delight of the sons of men, musical instruments of all kinds. I became great. I excelled more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. Whatever my eyes desired did not keep me from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. Nobody like it this time of life. No sweet. No sweet. My heart rejoiced in all my labor. This was my reward from all my labor. That is, everything he planned, he talks to do, he did. He saw them. He saw the reward of his labor. Then I look at all the works which my hands have done and the labor in which I have toiled. Indeed, it was vanity and grasping for the week. There was no profit. Under the sun. Why? Then I don't understand wisdom and folly. For what can the man do who succeeds the king? He's already thinking about what? What the next? The eyes of fools are in the moment. But the wise lift their eyes. Not just to what we are doing, but what could we have been? As a church, we need to lift our eyes to what could we have been? Not to what we are. Yeah. You don't get it. He said, what will he do? Yes, verse 13. Then I saw that wisdom excels fully as light excels darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head. That's why it's, but the fool walks in darkness. Yet I perceive that the same event happens to them all. I said in my heart, as it happens to the fool, so it happens to me. Why was I more wise? More wise? Then I said in my heart, this also valid. For there is no more remembrance of the wise and the fool forever. Since all that now is will be forgotten in the days to come. And now does a wise man die? As the fool, they breathe their last breath. There is no special way of dying. The way a wise man dies, same way he dies. That I hated life. Because the work that was done under the sun was distressing for me, for all this was vanity and grasping of the wind. But this are not even my focus. Then I hated all my labor, which I toiled under the sun, because I must leave it to the man who will come. His father left something to him, he had value added to it. Then he discovered that he will leave all he has done to, to a man. And he said, who knows whether it would be wise or a fool? Did we know the answer now? Yes. Yet he will rule over my labor with a toy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I said, Ten, don't toy. Oh, uh, it's because, uh, listen, there is toy cost. There is hard work. There is nothing that works without people working at it. If I tell you how many waters have crossed on that bridge for this money to have, you will shop. One of my friends called me during the week, Pastor Tom Fashion Pennies. His church is two years old. He said, Man of God, see, when you are having a mass, men of God call you because they know you. You might not. He said, Ah, 12 years. He said, Man of God. Thank God for your life. You have motivation to go to work. He said, we, we are just three years. He said, I cannot imagine what you have gone through. He understands it. He told me, he said, man, God, this lockdown is a rest for me. He said, because now I don't have to think about. He said, he told me, then he spoke about one of our friends. He said, he asked that one. I took, so I had to say, but there are four more churches we open in August. We shake yak yak. Do you know what it means? To be looking for money to give them. 
that we gather people in and you don't have the right to demand money from them. You can't force them to pay for it. And if you don't, you don't have it, call me a work. <laughs> As a pair, those that I'm talking about. And they like, prove with me, they prove with me. There's always a proof of the call. And you want the Lord to prove the call. Yeah. It's, a, it's a labor. But when God has lifted it, sometimes you put it in the hand of people who don't know what you have, what has passed. Sometimes the reason why the crowd kind of doesn't enter is because most people who are who is never know what it's all about. That means they want to church and we just had to share it. <laughs> share it. Sincerely, I have reasons recently to look at what it takes to manage people. How many times, even in a mixed issues, did you see that the disciples were fighting? Behind him, they will be chatting and arguing who is going to be the greatest. Yeah. Behind Jesus, the word became flesh. Yeah. Hmm. How do you just look at the word? How can you be the greatest? You that you don't talk to me, I would say, yes, it's my mouth that is opening doors for me. When they were asking, who am I? What all of you get quiet? <laughs> and Jesus had. Yeah. And he was moving. That's enough for some of us to disband our apostolic team. And so, since I've been preaching this, what all of you are fighting? <laughs> but it's the gentleness of God that makes us great. <laughs> you see, you can't even understand what goes into one sheet. 600 shekels goes into one sheet. You see, you see it's one. It's not one. That's 600 different parts. Yeah. You don't get what I'm talking about. So when you see that one shield, that's not a shield. That's the labor of years. I don't know whether you get that. Yes. I will need to make the church see this, see this thing. So that the crown can endure. So that what God is doing can work. Can endure. Because that's gospel. So I will leave it to a man who does not. So when Rehoboam became king, I used to tell people, the first person in the entire scripture that all Israel agreed should be king was Rehoboam. But you know what? When they chose Saul, some people did not believe. When they chose David, he ruled in Hebron for seven years. When they were to choose Solomon, Adonijah said he should be king. But when it was Rehoboam's time, the Bible said all Israel came to Rehoboam to make him king. Oh. And it was best that broke his way to two, two different nations. Because people who have the chief don't know what it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I go pray. You think that prayer? I pray a wow. That is how you are praying. Is this where you are praying? Is this prayer? There are some prayer. By the time you open your eyes, it's 5 p.m. Yeah. I have been dead. Yeah, I'm praying. I don't know. I do. We confess now. We confess now. I said, Shabbat, I'm praying. Do you know what goes into one sheet? Let's call the spade the spade. How many of you have prayed 24 hours before? One to nine. And do you know the body? You are not even praying for yourself. The people that are criticizing you are the people you are praying for. No, bless them. Increase them.
I find the father is let them go, they go. When you want to go, because warfare. That's not even the point. The point. The greatest point is we will be blessing that these things if we invested for no. Will we as a church put proper value on what it takes God to God to bring us here? In Psalm 89, from verse 19, God began to speak to David. You spoke on a vision to your Holy One and said, I have given hell to one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil, I've anointed him. Somebody say there's something called anointing. But I'm not talking about red palm oil. It's not goya. When the anointing is your life, you it's, it's not a feeling, it's me. Some of you will be anointed with fresh oil. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you the anointing can be provoked? Yes, sir. This thing is not true. I have anointed him with my holy oil because it takes an anointing to do what to do what God has called us to do. It takes an anointing. He said, "With whom my hand shall be established, my hand will strengthen him. The enemy will not outwit him because the anointing attracts the enemy." You don't get it. Immediately the heavens were opened over Jesus. And the spirit descended upon him like a door. And he said, This is my son, the woman well pleased. He was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. After the anointing was the devil. Some of you say, I'm not anointing. The type of lust you have never fought in your life before the anointing comes. Is the one that will come when they are anointed. Because the enemy wants to twat, twat it very fast. How come I restrain things? But the enemy will not outwit you. Amen. The sons of wickedness will not afflict you. Amen. Look at it. I will beat down his force before his face and plague those who hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy will be with him, and in my name his own shall be exalted. Yes. I will set his hand over the sea and his right hand over the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. My mercy I will keep for him forever, and my covenant shall stand firm with him. He seed. Because there is a point the body lives in. We are looking forward to his generation. His seed will also be to endure, and his throne as the days of heaven. You know the days of heaven? The days of heaven are endless days. God is speaking about an imperishable crown. God is speaking about something that does not depreciate. That was a type of promise that was on the Davidic line. Are we together? Yes, he said, He's thrown as the days of heaven. If his sons forsake my law and do not walk in my judgment, if they break my status and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their transgression with rod, their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness I will not totally take from me. I will allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break. Nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Once I've sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever. He is strong as the sun before me. The sun, I told you recently, the sun that the sun is older than man, according to the story of creation. And the sun has seen billions of people. 
pass through this heart and it has not burnt out. So when God describes your life as the sun, it means it will be relevant for diverse kind of seasons. It will be a reference. And that's why it's prophetic today that even on the on the flag of Israel is what is called the star of David. It's still shining. They are still contending for Jerusalem, the city that he took. Because it shall be established forever like a moon and the faithful witness in the sky. But this man said, but you have cast off an abode. You have been furious with your anointing. You have renounced the covenant of your servant. You have profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. There was a point in David's story and in this lineage, as you look down, it looked like that word was not true. Because he began to have sons like Rehoboam. But he had descendants like Manasseh. If you know who they call Manasseh, they still don't. never allowed anybody around you to call Manasseh. He was wicked. And he reigned very long in wickedness. God did not forget his sin. There was a reason why God said Israel was going to captivity. He sacrificed his own children in fire. When his grandfather David secured his own children in covenant, he became so self conscious that he, he sacrificed the coming generation. The crown you have cast to the ground. Question Is the crown still imperishable? Is the witness still like the sun and the moon, the faithful witness of God in the sky? Do you get the confrontation I'm bringing this morning? You have broken down his edges. You have brought his strongholds to ruin. How will pass by the way, plunder him is a reproach to his neighbor. You have exalted the right hand of his adversaries. You have made all his enemies rejoice. That's 43. You have turned back the edge of the sword and you have not sustained him in battle. Now, when you read these two portions of the same man, it looks like that word has failed. God's word you know, he said, I will not alter. God is not a man. Our emotions change. God is still invested in this work as it was when I never put anything on the ground. In fact, sometimes, you think God is now more invested in us because we have been able to gather here with people. He has spoken a word when there was no person. Committed to that word. That's why people can, can come in and go out, but that word will not be altered. That's why there will always be somebody to fulfill it. Amen. Because the word is what God is committed to. Yeah. You get it? This is faithful witness. So you have made his glory since you have cast his throne down to the ground. So his crown is on the ground, his throne is on the ground. Psalm 132, verse 13 to 18. The Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. The same way David chose Jerusalem as his capital. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless our provision. I will satisfy our poor with bread. I will quote a priest for salvation, and the saints shall shout aloud for joy. Yeah. I will make the horn of David grow. Someone say it will grow again. Yes, That's why it is not only the, the rod of Aaron that blows up. There is a rod of David to that blows up. That tribe, that lineage, after some time became a dead rod, produced no fruit. But God said, I will make the horn of David to grow. I will prepare a lamb for my anointing. Verse 18. His enemies are clothed with shame, but upon himself shall his crown flourish. Someone said the crown will flourish. The crown will flourish. God said, see that crown you see on the ground is fake. There is a, there is a body 
a sprinkling of the day Amen. that will happen in the house of David. Yes. And some people say, when? How will it happen? Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7 says, unto us a child was born. He said, unto us a son is given. He said, and of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Witness in the sky. That was why he was called the son of David. God had to set aside the crowns that are perishable to invest the crown that is imperishable of the increase of his kingdom. You see, to order it to establish with judgment and justice from that time forward forever. Somebody say forever. forever. Somebody say forever. forever. God said what I'm doing with David is forever. And what God is doing with us is for an imperishable crown. Yes. It's for something that is designed to speak in time and to speak in eternity. Church is something beyond just time. Yes. You don't get it. Yes. Church is even bigger than building a house. Yes. No, it's bigger than that. Even eternal. In Isaiah 53, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 53, verse 1 and 2 now spoke. He said, Who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of the dry ground. What is the dry ground? The dry ground was when the throne was cast to the ground. And when the crown was cast to the ground. And when we began to see the generation of David in the New Testament, they were now carpenters. There was nothing royal about them. But there, angels came to announce the birth of the son. There is one for you in the city of David today, a savior. From that dry ground was a sprouting. As it happened to Aaron, it happened to David. Because God said, I will not alter my word, nor change anything that has come out of my mouth. Jesus was a person who preserved the eternal value addition to the truth. He is our pattern. We must become a value at the people. Are we together? Yes, sir. How of us here must come prophets, singers, writers? What are you doing with the world? The world is not an end in itself. No. It's a seed. When you see people who go to a church that teaches the Bible, their music is different. You don't get it. Because it invades their thinking. I woke up this morning and I, I, I was I, I, I decided looking for that. Father to song. Spirit to spirit. I mean, there are some songs that when you hear, you feel like they tell you more for those songs. They want to smell it. Uh, and you are coming to a Bible division. You are not a fan. And they said, and you are debating on Big Brother. Cake. Big Brother cake. After. Do you know what went to one sheet? Sinless shekels of gold. Sabbath. 
heart of Abraham. Abraham knew that the man would do exactly what he said. He knows the man will not distract from his commandment. So he called him and said, I'm sending you. Abraham did not tell the man, when you get there, pray. All Abraham told the man is, the Lord will go with you. But the man got there, and because he has a capacity for value, and he said, he began to tell God, Lord, let it be. It was not Abraham that gave him what? That code. What Abraham gave him was what? Go get a wife. But it was the man that said, Lord, let it be that the person that I say, give me water. And the person said, I will not just give you water, I will give you your camel. There is an alignment in the thinking of Abraham and in the thinking of the man that even produced the type of prayer that that man was praying. Yeah. Someone say, value added. Value added. My God. Yeah. There are some churches where you enter the place, you know that people are here because their prayer is different. Yeah. Their prayer is different. Many years ago, I went to preach for one of my friends in this town. When I entered the church, I was in trouble. Because the way they were praying, and they were not praying for a house. I have seen them. See, there are places in this where you can never know their experience. That's why that, that church used to engage. They go normally. Places that you'll be on bike for two hours before you reach there in this battle. No car can get there. They go and push to be there. If you take some of you there, you will frustrate, you will fall from the bike, you won't get there. A lot of people see how the big car that you
fineness of wheat. It's not wheat. Look at it. Psalm 81, verse 13 to 16. And all this thing is introduction. I want to bring out one point that's in the New Testament. All that my people will listen to me. That Israel will walk in my ways. Oh well. I will so subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord will pretend submission to him, but their faith will endure forever. He would have fed them also with wit. Say finest. The mo- another association says he would feed them with the best food. Of who? The Lord. Of the Lord. 
though he knew only. Someone say he knew only. Now there are people that are never concerned about what they don't know. Then why do is what I do. Let me tell you what in that does. You eat people and you don't eat the of it. There are people that are never concerned about growing in knowledge. So when I come to church and I say, you know, when the Azusa Street is there, the pastor will say, don't come to the Azusa Street. And they have prophesied. Say, this week is my week of lifting. You will eat wheat. But say, uh, you will eat wheat. This man, he only did what? Baptism of John. This man is at least two steps behind present apostolic civilization. Because after John, they've been baptizing people in the name of the Lord. After that one, since Acts chapter 10 or chapter 2, people have been receiving new tongues. Well, that's why your prayers are not answered fast. Because whenever that person is pressing in, you stay in the outer court and say, My own! Let me just see or me. Because some of you serve God like Apollos. My own way of serving God is that I know only the doctrine of John. Okay? <laughs> Look at this verse. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Apollos and Priscilla had him, they were looking at him. They saw his capacity, but they saw his ignorance. And sometimes when we look at some of us, I see that you are willing to serve God. That's why it's a workforce on earth. But you don't know how these things happen. They don't happen by stress. I told you my story before. When I was in college school, when I saw some of my friends preaching. So I went to another house, the other house. I saw a Bible on somebody's bed. I took it, I moved it back. That was my first Bible. Then I went to my room. I sat down. I must know this Bible. I was very frustrated. I read from front to it. No meaning. Any meaning. The only one place that made meaning was kings. And that's why I'm still preaching for kings and rulers. Was that one? Reminds me of Nigeria. I saw poop. Stories of me. Because we was there of military room. You don't understand. They would say, and this man killed him and he raped him instead. I said, ah. <laughs> it got so real that I knew those kings how they reigned of it one after the other. That was the only place in Bible that I mean. But when I see Paul, this at least we to keep him things. <laughs> it was stressful. Knowing only the kings. So they saw him. When they had it, they took him aside. Yeah. 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 Let go for your life. They explained to him the way of God more accurately. Am I kicking him one way or no? That's why there is a school of ministry coming. Take advantage. Don't go and be sharing what you don't know. You know, actually, I'm okay. There's a prayer you pray um, around the sale. There's a, it's a Kali first wash. <laughs> and I see your sin. But on the other side, I see your ignorance. And some of you think that you just study, you don't study. <laughs> when I woke up this morning for over one hour, I see this speak in English. <laughs> so why do you see me talking about that? Have. Some of these things are written in an unknown tongue. I was just moving. I told myself, okay, we'll do two hours later. Libra, Kuskata, Libra, Tuskegaha. I think I need to be the Broko Tebaha. Everything. Because all of you think we are playing here. This kind does not go out. I said, by. There's a way where you don't pray, oh, you play keyboard, go down there. No, you will not be anointed. There's a way you play, you'll be killing the service. 
How many of you have some people do the same thing you do? And the minute they raise the same song you raise, the atmosphere changes. Have you ever asked yourself, you are doing well, but you are not as accurate? So they took him aside. And, no, the sheer publicly. But what shall I do? Uh, we'll get to the, the fact you didn't get there. I saw you say the throne of David is falling. You don't understand. And when the desire to cross our present, the brethren rose because it was now better equipped, exalted the disciples to receive it. And when it was they arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed through grace. And in chapter 19, this same type of discussion continued. The Bible said Paul came to a place called Ephesus. While Apollos was in Corinth. And he saw, he found some disciples. Who are they? Someone said disciples. That means they are they are committed. And he said to them, Do you receive the Holy Ghost when you believe? There is something that is the added value added to believing. What is it? The Holy Spirit. If you don't have it, it's just going, it's going to become a mental labor. Ask your neighbor, have you received the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Some of you are not even sure if the one you have now is Holy Ghost. I have to know that when people receive the Holy Ghost, they know. It's not that they imagine. They know. Say ta ta, say ta ta. That's not Holy Ghost. I do. I do. But we are not a man, they 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 are not a Stop playing drama when you can have it with Because recently I begin to get concerned about the type of Holy Ghost that is in Pentecostal churches. The Holy Ghost who have that they lie normally. It's not Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit I know, when you exaggerate, something strikes you. Same night to two different women. In the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Which Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost. <laughs> Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? And they said to you, we have not so much at whether there is a Holy Spirit. Uh, what will happen to this people? This thing will degenerate in their hand. They, they don't, it's not that they've not even received, they have not had. How many of you have read enough, searched enough concerning the Holy Ghost, so that you even know when it's active in your life? To so know this is his work, this is the way he acts, this is the way he leads, this is the way he conforms. Have you had? You must even hear. And he said to them, into, into what were you then baptized? So what were you baptized? I know your name is Esther. Your own name is uh, Theophilus. Into what were you baptized? He said, oh, what should I? He said, I baptize you. I baptize you. Into what? That's what they were into what? Into what were you baptized? Then he said, into John's baptism. John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance. How many of you are humble enough for me to be able to identify that what you know is actually something that God did or is something that God has left? Because most of us can be so much attached to antiquity. Hey, that's a, that's a, oh Lord, I think that God did it. It was God. Yes. Who did it? God. But do you have the to see? In Babylon's age, do you see the demons you are fighting? They are not your sure honor. They are Facebook, Twitter. They are the demons of that. They, do you understand? They control people's time. 
Your children are asking some questions by five years. Year. When they are five, they are already asking some questions. When I visit Pastor Peter and I see him, I'm afraid. There is no type of song, no type of dance. I don't know. I'm always thinking, ah, from where to where? How? Then I saw that uh, my expert was getting baptized. <laughs> this is serious. We have work to do. He said, what are you baptized? So Paul said, John is baptized. The scriptures told us further in this Ephesus that Paul went to the synagogue to preach and they did not receive him. Then he gathered the disciples again into a place called the school of Tyrannus and was teaching them Daily reasoning in the scripture. Are we together? Yes, verse 10. And this continued for two years. So some people say, after you receive the Holy Ghost, you need discipleship. This is how you add value to your journey. And I'm not talking about discipleship that happens by this thing continued daily for two years. How many times will we meet in the week? How many times do we meet in a week? Twice. And you are ready to complain. You now know why you are where you are. The experience of the New Testament that I read throughout scripture, the disciples met there. Did you notice? Yeah. I'm not calling for daily meeting. You don't know if you are ready. Yeah. 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 One day missed something, a treasure is missed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you see the Bible, there is the prophet's Bible. <laughs> it's so big like this, like the tablet of Moses. Welcome, Pastor JJ, please. Silver seeds. It's a 
something is happening to our our economy. He said, there is this poor. He's been preaching everywhere that everything made with hands are not God's. He did not mention the name of their God. He just gave a wide description, but it was so precise that he attacked the very culture that they represented. Did you ever say a place where Paul spoke against Diana or Athens? It was just as the kingdom was rising, something was falling. This child is for the rising and the falling. If are you following me? Dagon and the earth can't stay together. Something must rise for something to fall. If they go a bit to the same time, then there has been a level of depreciation in what we are doing. So this guy said, he said, find continue, find us to say. It is even now clear that all Asia are going to stop worshiping idols. Because all Asia has started here in the world. So they caused the riot. And, and, and the church said, why are you right? Who does not know that Artemis is the god of Ephesus and everybody worships that is magnificent? In fact, it is it's, it's in history that one of the seven wonders of the ancient world is the temple of Artemis. It was a it was a magnificent temple. But what the truth is? The word of God. comes after. When God has dealt with us in this dimension, we must ask ourselves, what is the next phase? What is the next thing that this thing must bath? Are you following me? Yes, sir. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost. So, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, there is a value added to the faith. What is that value added? Power. Power. Say power. power. You must move from that one step to the next. Glory to God. Amen. Somebody say, I have, power. I have power. You must be looking forward to what comes after this. What is God trying to do? We must not be trapped in this moment. In Daniel chapter 2, let's read Daniel chapter 2, verse 29. When Daniel was interpreting the dream of a Nebuchadnezzar to him, look at what he said. Daniel 2, 29. He said, As for you, O king, thoughts came to your mind while on your bed about what will come to pass after this. So, what brought the dream of Nebuchadnezzar? was that he was delivered from just the moment. He was looking at, see, because we have been looking at the imperishable, the imperishable kind. That is the only Mrs. JJ. Please celebrate the fire for you. And this should be our first time in the This is our fourth time in the faithless assembly. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God. Chest of silver, it became the, the 
of the loins of bronze, the feet of iron, the toes of iron mixed with clay. It was depreciation. Like you say, the crown does not endure for all generations. It came to that. And for us, it must come to our. So they said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Because there must be something God is putting on top of this experience. God doesn't bring you to a good church for just bring you to a good church. That's, not, that's the truth. God is very deliberate by everything he's doing. And we must relate with him in that same dimension. Are we together? So he said, these, these thoughts are the thoughts that come to your mind. And God began to speak to him about the things that God wants to do. And God needs to begin to speak to us about what he wants to do with the things he has put in our hands. So that's why I showed you how the kingdom moved from David to Solomon to Rehoboam, from David to Sol Solomon. David gave him all the preparation of the temple, Solomon built the temple, gave him all the gold, he made sheets of gold. But in the days of Rehoboam, it became sheets of bronze. Because he lost what it takes to move the kingdom into another place, levels. Level of progression. Amen. Amen. There is another level God is calling us to. The seed must produce another type of house. So when they got to Ephesus, he brought them endowment. And that's the gift of the soul. He showed them commitment. Because endowments will fail without commitment. That's why for two years they were reasoning. Then it took them to proclamation. Because after they, they committed and taught, what did they do? All Asia had the word. Don't think that means Paul went around everywhere. That means with the endowment and the commitment, there was a proclamation. Everybody began to speak. That's what. That's why Ephesus changed. That's why the powers of that land were threatened. Everybody began to speak. Everybody. I like the way. As I know, he said it many years ago. He said in Genesis chapter thirteen verse six, the Bible says Abraham was great. He said in Genesis chapter thirty verse forty three. Uh, Genesis 26 verse 13 the Bible says and Isaac became very great very great I, Genesis 26 he became very prosperous then in Genesis 30 verse 43 Jacob was described as he exceedingly increased are you seeing progression? The grandfather prospered. Isaac, very prosperous. Jacob, exceedingly prosperous. When he got to the nation Israel, in Genesis 47 27, the Bible said they multiplied exceedingly. Jacob increased exceedingly. The nation multiplied. What's that lesson? What's the lesson in there? When you want to see the crown endure from generation to generation, this I'm teaching of what I what I call value added. What has been delivered? There is a way you hold on to it that had that an extra layer of value is placed on it. You remember Peter gave that counsel to your your faith and virtue. You, there is something to have to enhance it. Stop hearing that. People are willing. People serve God. People give to God. Let it be your story. How to hit a wall in that dimension. Stop hearing people pray. The days of hearing is over. Stop hearing. Oh, when pastor went to that place, pastor did not even know he was going to speak. And you know, if you see the way he spoke, and he was just able to bring the word, that is what God is bringing to you. I 
as a type and shadow of what is calling your attention to. Praise God. Hallelujah. These are the things that God wants to do with us. And I want to envision us as a church. So when Abraham was old, and the Lord had blessed him in all things, his only concern was about how that thing that he has is going to move to the next level in Isaac. That's why I said he was not married from this land. Contrast Abraham with Solomon. Do you know what? I'll show you why they over feel. When Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away from God. The season of his impartation and training the next generation became the season of his compromise. That was why he produced the food. What Abraham had gathered over the years from his work, how God brought that same Isaac to him in old age was now what he was emphasizing to him. Be faithful to the Lord. And that was how God was able to preserve that same dealing and even add value on that same dealing for another generation. But in Solomon, when he should be doing that, what was he doing? Because love is strange with him. He was giving him, he was being peaceful for everybody. This was, I want to worship Chemosh. He said, give it one temple for, for her day. This one was saying, oh, I want to worship. Uh, if you see that story in 1 Kings 11, 1 to 13, this one said, I want to worship. And he created false peace. So the mother of, of, of Rehoboam was an Ammonitess. She was a straight woman. Worshiping her own high Do you get how it works? So as, as the church, listen, we must, we must work with God until there is a new level of value added to what God has endowed us with. I want to tell you today that we have the fruit of the world, the fruit of the heart. I don't have a vision just for a place. For many years, people have always said, when I preach, I don't preach as if I'm talking to five people. Because I have the fruit of the heart, the fruit of the world. That's a vision I want you to capture. If you, this, that's what we put an extra value. We are not just struggling with a couple. This is not about a couple. Do you not get what I'm saying? We are going into the nations to disciple. We can, that's why we must get past some levels of discourse now because they are too low for the new call. We can't now be struggling about how they put 50,000 there. You have the fruit of the world. Let me give you two scriptures as I said before I go past my own. In Isaiah 4, verse 2. Isaiah 4, verse 2, and Isaiah 27, verse 6. Isaiah 4, verse 2. In that day, the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious. The fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appealing for all for those. Of Israel who have escaped. Let, let me let, go to Isaiah 27, verse 6. It describes it better. Isaiah 27, 6. Those who come shall come, those who come shall eat cause to take roof in Jacob. Israel shall bosom and go and fill the face of the world with fruits. You are not just filling a limited space. You are filling the world. But all Asia had. When what God is doing must have, a, must have a revelation for the now and a potential for the days to come. Do you get what I'm saying? So when he was preaching in Ephesus that day, he was reaching Ephesus, but from Ephesus, what did he do? He reached Asia. God must be doing something with us that is speaking in the moment but has capacity to fill the heart with fruits. So let's get delivered from these walls. Praise God. From what? 
from these walls. Let's get delivered from it. Stop struggling. Let's get delivered. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, state manager and uh, tele guidance. Uh, you are not in church. Uh, 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 you are not praying. Uh, no! Let's grow. Let's blue up. He said the corn of wheat falls to the ground in advice me. But when it dies, what does it mean? It brings forth much fruit. Somebody said we have potential for the nations. You'll be so surprised how much of what we are hearing here is, is cried for in the nations. During the lockdown, and we have so much of social media presence, if you see how people are joining from every, if you see calls that I receive from everywhere, we have people, we have members automatically from places. We have people sending tight. Until we, some of us even felt that maybe this love that is should continue. And this. But the truth of the matter is that they say cry. But you see, if you are not careful, you will think it's just we are talking about building an organization and let's buy a chair. So let's change our mixer. No, we have a fruit for the world. To fill the with fruit. Let that potential break out so that the crown can move to another level of value in the, value in the next stage. How many of us want to, want to do a new thing? That's all I'm saying. A new thing. We can't be fighting our whole devils and want to be a new, 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 new law. The Bible says it gave us a principle of coming new. Do you know what it said? It said, put down the whole world. Now be a new man. Tell it in another place. He said, he said, put off the old man and put on the new man. The old must go for the new to come. We can't continue in the old attitude and want the new move. And there is something new God can do with us. Why is the key word? Is it still the old? Why is it still? Tell him that is old. Do you understand me today, church? Do you understand my output? Someone said there will be a value added to my work. Some of you here, we need to ask you that question. Sincerely, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Oh, some of you, see, when is a Pentecostal? Pentecostal is not just some club, or the Lord's club. It's a place where people have a living walk with the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Father. We must have a living walk with what? With the promise of the Father. Will you come and sing that song for me?
in the war. In the war. In the war. A new face, Lord. A new face. A new dimension. A new level. New strength. New anointing. It comes from you. Like the thunder and the lightning of your word. Let it dry. Let it leave our world. Bring us to new levels of influence for your name. Even the type we have never seen before. Bring us into the discussion that will open it to us. Even in you, Father. We are grateful. Somebody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah.